Welcome to a technical demonstration of Taylor Systems CompD product based upon a Quagga routing suite presented by our Principal Solutions Architect, Jan Lindblad. Okay, we are ready for a CompD demo. Uh, what you see on the screen right now is the CompD web UI. And I will log into the system with uh, admin admin. And here comes the splash screen. You see some things are being configured already. Uh, but things are pretty blank at this point, so I think uh, it's a good idea to start with configuration, and then we can do other things. So I'll go to OSPF, create that instance, and add an area. OK, um, I can add uh, network IP. Go back to OSPF, add the network IP. And here's a reference to the area table, so I'll just pick the area I just defined. And I'll add a neighbor. At this point, I can view my changes. This is what's inside my transaction at this point. So all of the things that you've seen so far are automatically rendered from the data model. So the data model describes what, what the elements that you can configure and monitor are, the types and ranges and so on, and dependencies and references and all that. And this is what the web UI that you get from that. From uh, what we've seen so far, there was no additional programming required. This is just what you get uh, when you have this, your Yang model like this. If I'm happy with these changes now, I can just hit the Save button up here to make them go live and persist them into the database. OK, we're now live with these changes. I can show you some validation. So let's go back here to router. Let's go into this interface settings here. So let's add an address. So if I try to type something that's incorrect here, like A wouldn't work for an IP address, the web UI won't even allow me to have that character. So it erases my A immediately because the web UI knows what an IP address looks like, so an A would never go in there. If I type something else, like 500 in here, and create this, it tells me, OK, 500 is not a valid value. I'll have to go back here and fix that problem, say 5 instead. So that's the syntactic validation happening immediately in the web UI. Uh, then you have the semantic validation that happens uh, the checking the dependency between values. So here I can go into RIP, for example. I'll try to set an authentication string. This is basically a password for the RIP routing instance. I'll pick the password just ABC like that and try to commit this. Oops, there was a problem. Validation error. It says that uh, you cannot have both authentic authentication keychain and authentication string settings at the same time. Those parameters are mutually exclusive. And the validation caught that. So I'll have to go back here. And if I want to have this particular authentication string, I have to clear this one out, so remove this one. Now I can try to commit this configuration again. Save this. OK. Then I got a validation warning. So the validation logic they can, can either say that, yeah, this is fine. Let's go with that. Or no, this is a problem because this and that error. But they can also give validation warnings, saying that, well, technically this is correct, but it may have undesirable effects if you go live with this. And in this particular case, it's the authentication string is a very short password. So it's a, maybe a security hazard to go with this password. So I can go back here and say, OK, let's change that into something more difficult. 
and commit that. Now we're live with that. And uh, this is not only for simple fields like this, but it could be a validation check that says, uh, yes, Mr. Operator, this is technically a valid configuration. Uh, but are you aware that you would terminate the service for 2,200 users? Proceed or abort. So that could be a valuable feature sometimes. I'll show you rollbacks. So we have been committing a few transactions by now. So if we hit the rollback button up here, you can see that we have four rollback files numbered through 0 through to 3, where the most recent one is number 0. And you can see when they are made, who made them, and through what interface here. So if I click on one of these rollback files, that will contain the undo information for the latest transaction. And this one, this transaction, was setting an address and uh, a keychain for the RIP uh, for the RIP routing. So if I load this uh, rollback file, I can now view the changes, see what I'm about to do. I can even go beyond the rollback and do more changes at this point if I like to. If I'm happy with this, I can just go and commit, hit save button. Okay, now this, this changes. The RIP auth is back and my password is gone. The address is gone. In the ISO applications, the, this is rollback is just one more transaction, like, just like any other. So it's no restart of the applications or reset or any. The applications are basically not aware that any rollback took place. They are just aware that we have a new configuration and they reacted to this new configuration, just like any other configuration change. It just so happens that this configuration is very, very similar to the one that we had a few moments ago. Thank you.